The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 24th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. That's the number you call in on. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off early and send that to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We've got a sea of red out there. All the U.S. indices trading to the downside. The biggest move is a 2% move in the semis. They're trading down 72 points. The Dow's up 126, four tenths. Six uh, tenths were sent for the S&P or 26 points, 184 for the NASDAQ 100. Gold is up 90 cents with silver being down nine pennies. Lights recruit is up 29 cents. Natural gas is up seven. 30 treasury is down five ticks, trading out at 120.02. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside, it is Splunk. SPLK, that's up 13%, 13 bucks. One and a half percent move for Equinix, that's a seven, eleven dollar move there. Bin Fast Auto up eight bucks or 20%. Autodesk up seven bucks, three percent. And a Guess Inc. up five dollars, that's a nice 28% move. To the downside, S Mill Holdings down 3.6%, 25 bucks. Netflix off 18, Super Microcomputer, 6% move, 17 dollar Roonies. Monolithic Power System, 16 bucks, 3%, 15 dollars for Burlington stores, nearly nine plus percent out there. So let's go take a look at what you want to look at. I don't know what you want to look at, but we're going to go take a look at. Let's do like we have been lately. Let's start taking a look at um, where are we at market breath. Let's look at the 30 minute market breath signals here. Uh, we are taking a look at the S&P 500, 56 above, 309 below. Very negative market breath for the 30 minute time frame. We'll just park that. And as we take a look at intraday charts, we'll want to remember that. In the case of the NASDAQ, four above, 78 below. So this is really – now that's to an extreme level out there. Typically, you get to those extremes, we see some kind of snapback. But what we know about the 30-minute time frame, it is bearish across the board, ES Mini and S&P. Different story when we take a look at a 60-minute time frame. Bullish for the 60, bullish for the 240, bearish for the daily and weekly inside the S&P 500. What's that say? Choppy markets. What have we seen so far today? Pretty choppy markets. So that condition should remain. If we take a look at the NDX 100, bearish on the 30, bullish on the 60, the 240, the daily – and so close on the weekly. When I say so close on the weekly, 27 above, 28 below. So it's basically got one instrument that can get back above the bottom of its daily profile or another instrument to trade above the top of its daily profile. And then you'd be bullish across the board for the NQ out there. So, you know, Stevie likes to say, hmm, something to think about. Well, instead of thinking about it, let's go take a look at it. Let's try to figure out what's really going on out here. And let's do that by taking a look at the... Uh, We'll change panels here, and let's start by looking at the NQ, since that one has 
only a bearish crossover in the 30 minute time frame, at least at this moment in time. Let's go take a look at this 30 minute chart out here. See if there's any kind of signals whatsoever. So as we take a look at the 30 minute time frame chart, we'll see this top last night about 4.30. The actual confirming signal came through at four o'clock. I take that back. So four o'clock, we had a confirmed top inside the NQ. That was that rose momentum indicator top. What's transpired was we opened up the market here at 9, 9.30. We crushed through its breakout level of support. The next breakout area of support is 14,957. We're in bar number seven. So ideally, what price will do is it'll get down towards that 14,957 level. It'll form a TD nine count bottom. The earliest that that could happen, this is a 30 minute time frame chart. So we're bar number seven at uh, noon. We get bar number eight. So it'll be between noon and one is what I'd be looking for on a 30 minute time frame for the NQ to see if it has completed a TD nine count bottom pattern and preferably near that 14, uh, where was that, uh, where the 30 minute chart go, sorry. 14,957 area is a, is a place to look. As I look at the other intraday charts out here, 10 minute negated a TD nine count bottom. So that suggests that push lower. Well, the 60 minute is going to complete a TD nine count bottom at noon. So that's interesting. We should have bar number eight, likely to have bar number eight. For, well, I don't know if we will or we won't on the 30 minute. So watch the 30 and the 60 for signals out here. Is there anything else that Stevie sees? Look, we had tops all across the board that came in, you know, in that uh, this morning whether it's the five-hour chart, the four-hour chart, the two-hour chart out here. And so now we're watching is these other areas of support. But I would say in the NQ, paying attention to 30, well, to pay attention, 15, 30, and 60-minute charts are those intraday charts that I would be focused on. Let's go see what the ES Mini has to offer us. See what, if it's giving us any kind, oh, she's, I need to put in the month on the contract, otherwise we get uh, blank stuff. Uh, now I've got to wait for this to populate. Mm, mm, okay, so, okay. See if we can get this going here. Sorry about that, folks. Are we going? September. Nope, that's not going to work. There we go. Okay, so in a moment, we'll get the ES mini charts. We want to see if there's any kind of synergy here in the 60 minute and the 30 minute specifically, see if there's any kind of bottom signals. If a market is going to form some kind of bottom, you prefer to see it taking place on all of those intraday charts for the equity futures for that same time frame. Do we always get that? We do not. But when we do get it, that's a nice thing. So now as these charts here pop, they were just looking to see where we're at stage wise. Um, no, we're not even near a TD nine count bottom on a 60 minute ES, but the 30 minute. So the 30 minute is uh, we're in bar number seven, much likely we're on the NQ. We know that it is bearish from a TAS market profile standpoint. So odds favor getting back to that 440275 level out there. Um, so pay attention to the 60 minute and the 30 minute on the e on the NQ and the ES. Pay attention to the 30 minute chart out there. What happens if 440275 fails? You've got support down at 439950 as well. That's coming from the two hour time frame chart. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the ES and we take a look at the NQ. As long as we're here, let's go take a look at what's going on inside that US dollar index. As we mentioned, prices trying to break above the U.S. dollar, that is, trying to break above the top of its TD9 count pattern. Now, that TD9 count pattern would be negated with a close above 103.62. We're trading right now 103.66, although I do have a 10-minute delay. These are the three currency pairs that make up the 80% or the majority of the uh, U.S. dollar index. The euro completed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. Now, if price closes below that low, that low, folks, is 1.0802. That's going to suggest a further move lower. That will make the U.S. dollar index continue to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. You've got all the U.S. equity markets trading to the downside. You've got the Dow that's trading off about 131 points. S&P's down 24. NASDAQ 100 down 178. Uh, geez, I put the wrong thing up here. Let me change this. Sorry about that. Folks, give me a moment. And uh, what I'm going to do here is there's a question that came in. And um, even though I, I, in essence, I already covered it, I just really, the charts will really kind of make the point. And uh, so if you give me just a moment here. Let me get this uh, template set up properly. So let me get my 30 minute. What did I hear? Where is it all 30? Oh, all 30. There we go. Okay. So there was a question that came in inside the Tigers Den. And I think it came in from Roger, maybe. Uh, Roger, I think, was asking. He was asking about intraday levels in the SPY, uh, which I've got over here on the left hand side. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. Yeah, I am. Okay. So I put two two 30-minute charts out here. The one's the SPY, the other is the ES Mini. And as you were listening to me go through the markets, the ES and the NQ, what I was suggesting is that we may get a 30-minute, because of market breadth, we may get a 30-minute TD9 count bottom. You can see we're in bar number seven. Now, here we've got the SPY over there. If I was going to use TD9 counts on the SPY, not that they're not valid, but we've got an underlying instrument here that's really going to provide us with the information that we need, and that's the ES Mini chart. So if you are trading the SPYs intraday, I'm not saying you need to trade the futures. What I'm saying is you must get access to the futures to take a look at the patterns that are going on there. You will improve your trading if you do that. We The, the whole idea of using the futures contracts, because when you listen to this show, it's really all about patterns. It's either going to be a TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator top, an A to B equals CD pattern, uh, might be wave number seven, like letter G, uh, that you can see up at the top in the uh, spies out there. Um, but when that letter G took place out here inside the spy, let's take a look. What was that time? That was at the close yesterday. That was at 10, was at 10.30 this morning out here. But we already had a TD9 count top that formed 
inside the equity futures. That was never really touched out there. So it's really giving you the signal. So what you want to do, Roger, you ask for the information on the SPY. I'm going to give that to you. And the SPY says that you've got TD9 count breakout support at 439.10 and profile support at 439.61. But um, no bottoming signal. I mean, you're only in bar number three right here. So focus and pay attention to what's going on inside the equity futures contract. That's what you really want to take your signals from. And then you can go ahead and execute the long trade inside the SPY or whatever other instrument it is that you might uh, trade uh, for that. So I do hope that that helps you. I just wanted to kind of show you that, to show everybody that, you know, you hear me say that uh, oftentimes. Somebody will say, hey, let's go take a look at the UNG. And absolutely, let's take a look at the UNG. Nobody's asked that question. But let's go do that. But in order to take a look at the UNG, what is Stevie really going to do? We're not going to look at the UNG. We're going to take a look at natural gas. So let's put the natural gas charts up on our screen. What do we know about natural gas and the rally that took place out here? Well, the first thing we know, if we take a look at the 60 and the 120 minute time frame chart, we can understand why price stopped where it did. Why did it stop where it did? Ran right into TD nine count breakdown resistance at two dollars and sixty seven cents. So has natural gas proven itself to us at this stage here? No, heck no. All it's proven itself to us is one that it rejected a prior swing point on the daily time frame, and two that where it rallied into is resistance. We take a look at that hourly and that two hour time frame chart. Didn't get up to it on the two forty. Didn't get above any kind of resistance above on the two forty or the five hour time frame chart. So natural gas has been a very frustrating instrument to trade out here. But when we do take a look at the daily time frame, it's very possible today will form possible, today will form bar number eight of a TD9 count. In order to do that, price must close below 269, 2.691. But it's tomorrow's close that's gonna be even more important. Let's assume bar number eight completes today. Well, in order for the bar number nine to complete, and you must have a bar number nine completion, price is gonna need to close below 2.743. So you wanna watch that. Now, even if we get that TD9 count bottom, what we also have to remember here, when we take a look at natural gas, is one, price is below its red oscillator and change line. So we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish conditions. Number two, price is trading below its bullish structure daily profile. That says now, that the level of resistance on a counter trend move, in order for this to prove itself that it's not a counter trend move, price must close above the center of that profile. At the present time, that's $2.83. Of course, profiles change. They could change tomorrow. And then we have a new set of data. But that's not the data that we've got right now. The data that we've got right now says $2.83 is a very key level of resistance. If price can close above that, then maybe we've got something out there. Of course, we need to see two consecutive closes above resistance. That would be the top of that profile as well at $2.99. We would not get those same signals if I put up the UNG charts, but we would trade UNG based on what we see here. So what can we say about natural gas? Yeah, it was a nice little rally, but all it did was it ran right into where the sellers were at and that we can see on the charts there, nothing Stevie put up here. This is just simply a part of the TD nine count system, something that you definitely want to uh, learn about. So I hope that helped you out for somebody who might be interested in natural gas. Let's go to our actual first request out here. That's coming in from uh, Nicholas and Nicholas wants to take a look at SEE. So let's get over to those charts here. And his question is, has it bottomed? So let's pull up the charts out there. Let's see what kind of signals we get. We take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. And if I were to ask you this question, has C, S, E, E, bottomed? And let me restate it. Has it bottomed for its daily time frame? And if it has, what's the bottom pattern? Well, you can see it. It's a TD9 count bottom. That pattern completed yesterday. That says that you can take a long position inside C, Nicholas. You would close out that position if price closed below the TD9 count bottom. That's at 3382. So 3382 is going to be a key level. What should transpire here with regard to C is price should make its way up to the oscillator and change line. However, what we can see is there's a new profile that formed yesterday. And that new profile has got resistance at the 3504, I'm sorry, 3508 level. We're trading at 3504. Price needs to close above 3508 in order to suggest that it's going to go ahead and make that move at least up to the oscillator and change line at about the $36 level. So the daily's got a bottom. Where would you buy this if price can't close above the top of that profile? Well, I would say instead of buying it now right up at resistance, you'd buy it at support. And that would be around 34.24, the bottom of its profile. So you'd be looking for somewhere between 34.24, 34.66 out there. Now, if we take a look at C, 
this is going to be, it looks like this is going to be day number three of consecutive moves higher, closes higher, I should say. And if we take a look at this, um, it does sometimes rally for four or five, six sessions out there. That seems to be the max. But I see a lot of twos and threes out there. So this is suggesting that if resistance holds, Nicholas, that you should be able, if you want to take a long position based on the daily patterns out there, you should get a one or two day retracement on that. I don't have anything that says that's going to start right now, but that's what I would be looking for if I were you. If price closes above that, well, then you know it's going to go tackle that 35.99 level. When we look at the weekly chart, we don't have a bottoming pattern. We've got a road momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. But that is a bullish reversal candle. We're not going to see that this week. On a monthly basis, what this is telling us is that it wants to head lower. And head lower says it wants to get down to the 29.36 level. So the daily, yes, it's got a bottom. But it hasn't proven itself to you, really can't prove itself to you until it gets about 3598. And if it does that, we could or should see it move up to the 3978 level. So, Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. When we get back to this break for G Motion, we're going to look at the semis, SMH. For John C., we're going to look at the uh, regional banking sector. And Mr. Bill is uh, wants need overnight spy numbers. Does trade? Yeah, I know that. But I don't have the overnight data in the system. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Still all U.S. indices trading the downside. Dow's down 116, S&P off 25, NASDAQ 1 on 184, and the Russell's down 14 points. We're going to go take a look at the SMHs for G-Motion inside the Tiger's Den. And we take a look at the SMHs. Here's what we know. Nice move, mostly because of NVIDIA um, and overnight hours and, and certainly this morning. But what we can say about the SMHs, is that resistance is held and the resistance is the top of its bearish structured daily profile and that number is 154.24 now price right now is trading back below its green oscillator and change line if it closes below 151.18 the smh will tell us that they had lost its momentum and that price might get back to retest support and support here would be 146.17 on a weekly time frame we have price trading with inside its profile levels. The profile levels range from 147.55 up to 161.17. On a monthly time frame, depending on how we close the month, we could get another Rosemontum indicator top and a prior Rosemontum indicator top out there. Of course, that prior one was negated. The prior one was from January of 2022. Now, if we do get a bearish reversal candle at month's end, what price should do is get back and test its oscillator and change around around the 142 and change out there. Now, the SMH is on a 30-minute time frame as we deep dive down into it we'll see you've got a road momentum indicator signal we have price below profile and this would suggest that where price wants to go target is the 148.86 level that is its breakout area on a 30 minute time frame for the smhs so in summary the smhs and I, in fact i'm going to do this here uh, i'm going to say ignore the profile levels that you'll see the smhs show a clear td9 count bottom pattern but let's go take a look at the socks out here. Let's go take a look at the actual indice. The indice doesn't take into consideration distributions, dividends, things of that sort. So it's a more, more pure way of uh, looking at what's going on, in this case here, the indice. And you'll see that in the case of the semis, they negated their TD9 count bottom. So I'm going to say the uh, SMHs, the semiconductor, do not have a valid bottoming signal, a valid bottoming pattern here. And instead, we can see on an index basis, prices back below its red oscillator and change line to 3580. If that's the case and it rains, rain and closes below that today, odds favor the semis are going to make a move back to the swing point, the lower swing point, the one from the trading day of August 18th. And if it takes that out, you're going to see a gigantic A to B equals CD to the downside. Stevo, is that even possible? Well, if you look at the weekly time frame chart, it doesn't say it's possible. It says it's going to happen. <laughs> Wait a minute here, Stevie. How can you say that? Well, first, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. You've got a wave number seven top out there. So you've got two tops. The two tops make it better than one. No, it just makes it two tops instead of the four tops. Just kidding. What we can see is transpired now today. So that move higher in the semis got the weekly price to get up and test and reject that oscillator and change line. The key level for the semis, if they are really going to move lower, it's going to be a close below the bottom of its weekly profile. And then there's a 3527.73. We closed below it last week. If we close below it on Friday, tomorrow, that is what's going to go ahead and trigger the A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, price still has to take out that swing point. So even though I'm saying it should or could, you've got to still take out that low. That low, by the way, that we're looking at is that 3405.34 level on a monthly time frame. We could get a, or we should get bar number eight of a TD9 count, but that still is not the high of the pattern. So that's not going to really help us. But watch the daily and watch the uh, weekly. A little bit tricky out there. If we just stayed on the SMH charts, what we wouldn't see is that we really have no bottoming pattern inside the semiconductor index. And we're going to take our P's and Q's in this one from the indice itself out here. So watch 3580 and change out there today. You close below it, the semis are likely headed lower. So G-Motion, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. If not, let me know. And I'll be happy to try to post that. Next question coming in from uh, John C. Wants to take a look at the uh, regional uh, banking sector. We're taking a look at the ETF here. The ETF shows a TD9 count bottom. It also shows that what price did was it bounced right up into resistance. And that's at the 4441 level. John Price really needs to get back inside that profile. We are now two consecutive days. This could be three consecutive days below that level. Uh, it makes, even though it's got a TD9 count bottom, the signal is really neutralized. So it's a neutral overall signal because price ran right up into resistance and rejected that resistance area. On a weekly time frame, regional banking sector is trading below the bottom of its weekly profile. It closed below it last week. It closed below it uh, this week. Suggests you have a change in trend. And that change in trend should take us back at least to the last 
Chrysler and Change Line, that would be 4190. If we take a look at the uh, monthly time frame chart out here, we don't really have much. We've got an A to B equals CD to the downside, no bullish reversal candle out here, price trading back inside its profile levels, which range from 3760 to 4684. So with regard to the regional banking sector, you've got a little bit of a rally that's going on. If we take a look at the typical Texas two-step out here, you'll see that today is likely to become bar number two of consecutive moves higher. Very likely, the regional banking sector heads lower tomorrow or it heads lower on Monday. Not too likely that this will exceed a three-bar continuous rally. And I would say at this stage of the game, unless it closes back inside its uh, daily profile, that is a likely outcome that today sets up the next, at least short-term, top for the regional banking sector. So I hope that that helped you out, uh, John. And I think there was a question. What was the question here? Um, Disney. G-Man wanted to take a look at Disney. That's what it is. I just simply forgot to write it down. So D-I-S is the ticker symbol. Let's take a look. Oh, Disney's looking pretty horrible. What do you mean it's looking pretty horrible? We're down below daily profiles. We're down below red oscillator and change line. We're down below its bottoming pattern, so it's negating that. It's on a weekly basis. We're down below a hammer candle. That hammer candle was a swing low. That swing low was back on uh, December 30th. This volume here was 60 million shares. How do you gauge, you know, Christmas volume versus this volume? Well, this volume should at least be larger. It's not. It's only about, oh, I'll take that back. It is, no, it's not. It's 38 million shares as we speak. But Disney, trading below last month's swing low out there is, or, or uh, low of the last month's session. Boy, that is not good. So how are we going to figure out what Disney's doing, where it's going? Let's open up this weekly chart. Let's see what else we can find out here. So on a weekly time frame, it's trading back into a swing point from back in March of 2020. How about that? Disney's made it all the way back to March of 2020. Now, that swing point on a weekly basis, 169 million shares. So we know we're coming into it with light volume. But as long as price closes below that, and that's likely to happen. In fact, it closed well last week and several weeks. Odds favor price, because we're trading inside here, wants to go tackle that. So I would say the next area, the next target for Disney is around 79.07. That's that bottom of that March 20 weekly swing point that is out there. And that's what it looks like Disney is doing. And if I look at a short-term time frame chart, which we'll do here momentarily, this is the 30-minute. What we will notice is Disney go, is going to form bar number eight here at uh, 12 noon. So what Disney should do on an intra day basis it should form a td9 count bottom by 1 p.m and then we should see a rally now there's no profile here that i would point out to you the rally at this stage here should take us up towards that oscillator and change line currently printed about 84.96 so watch disney's price action as we get towards that one o'clock time frame now if you are trading disney identify the low of the day as you get to 1 p.m Price closing below that low, that tells you we're headed south, or it's headed south. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's take a look at NVIDIA. Question is, is this going to go red today? So let's take a look at the charts here for NVIDIA. Let's look at the 30-minute time frame chart first. So let me pull that over and uh, see what we've got out here. So we've got the nice rally. They have nice numbers. Um, on a 30-minute basis, yeah, it negated its TD9 count top. So right now, we're just looking at the intraday charts here, John. And you can see that uh, I don't have a... Well, I do have a topping pattern. I've got a rose momentum indicator top. And so we've got to first watch the levels of support. And right now on a 30-minute basis, you can see the price is testing one of those. So it's testing the green oscillator and change line. The green oscillator and change line tells us a couple of things. One, it tells us the price oscillator is above zero. And when price is above that, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. So this is a, even though you've got a topping, confirmed topping signal out here, the overall signal would be neutral. You're trading above, you have a rising price oscillator above zero, and you're trading above res the resistance of its profile levels. Now, what happens if price gets back below 477.40 out here? Well, then price should go target its support areas 469.08. 465.68, 464.70, and 460.58 would be the levels to be watching for. So is it going to go red today? Well, I don't know the answer to that question, but you'll know the answer by watching how price deals with those support levels. Right now on a 30-minute basis, it's saying no. Price just made its way back to support. Now, on a weekly time frame out here, it closed this week above the high from July 14th, 480.88. That would negate its Rhodes momentum indicator top, and that would suggest a further rally. We can see on a monthly basis that a TD9 count top is likely to form between now August and October. So there is a significant top that could form or should form inside of NVIDIA. Typically, when you form bar 8, 90% of the time, it'll go on and form bar number 9 out there. But we're going to have to come back to that next month. We, it's still, still a little bit too early to make that call. But will it go red today? It's not giving you that signal right now. Watch those 30-minute uh, support levels out there. That'll answer that question. And thanks so much for the request. Let's go out to uh, Newport Beach and speak with Garo. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good. How about you, sir? I am doing excellent. Thanks so much for calling. Always good to hear your voice. And uh, Square, you're still in the Square trade? Or, or how are, what are you doing, Square, and how can I best help you? No, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting 
I need your I need your value prices on uh, Square on the daily. Okay. Uh, and the daily it shows me uh, the turning. Do you see for four days for one, two, three, four, four to five days as building um, a base here at this point between yes. fifty five and fifty seven. Yes. Um, here, the daily chart uh, tells me that uh, uh, the turning point and uh, going bull is going to be on um, uh, uh, is going to be on fifty eight dollars and eighty seven cents, where okay. the candle will hit the upper dot of the SAR. From yeah. that point, the trend will change. But when I look at the weekly chart, the weekly chart it has only three dots at the very top, so the candle is far away from the five day moving average. You see, yes, a, a I do. candle has to go above the five day moving average to become a new uh, uptrend, even though if the dots are higher than the candle uh, on, on the weekly. Uh, but uh, even uh, also the candle is far away from the five day uh, and the dots are very far, far away from five day. But uh, if it goes like so, the, the daily chart this week, uh, today or tomorrow, not today, but probably tomorrow or Monday, uh, will turn the trend. It will hit that 58.87. If it, it won't go any lower than this, uh, I want to see what are your numbers, sir. That's all. Sure, perfect, perfect. So that, that's great, girl. So thank you. So I do have your charts up on the screen, folks. If you are paying attention and watching us on Tiger TV or inside the Tiger's Den, the charts that you're looking at are the tools that Garo uses. And if, when he's, he's referring to dots, he's referring to the parabolic SAR uh, program out there by uh, Jay Wells Wilder. So it's a great tool. Uh, Garo is a master of it. And uh, unfortunately, our dots sometimes uh, differ with regard to price. In fact, I'd have to say they almost always do. I don't know why. But Garo, I want to ask you a question. So you gave us a price point of where your dot is at. Mine's at 5806. Yours is a little bit higher than that. But when price hits that dot, you also said on the weekly chart, price has got to at least close above that five-day simple moving average, which is at the 69.50, uh, I'm sorry, it is at the 63 level no, right no, no, now. No, no, 58.87. 58.87 is your dot on the daily, right? Yes, sir. On, on the yeah, daily, it, on the daily yes. the upper dot is 58.87. That's when, when the candle hits that spot at that dot, the dot will go down, and from there on, the trend will change. From that on, the shorts are going to cover it, and from there, I won't say that from there it's going to shoot up to 70 or $80, but from that time, that moment of 58, 58 80, 87, the, the trend will go long from that, from that point. Yes, and so my question to you, if you get that signal, but on the weekly chart, you're still below the five-day simple moving average, which right now is priced at about 63 bucks. What would you do? Do you wait? Yeah, that, 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 that's it. You see, that contradicts each other. If the yeah. daily chart goes bull, the weekly ch chart still is a bear. Yes. The, the only time the weekly chart goes bull, when the candle goes above the five day. Even sure, though sure. if the dots are above the candle, it doesn't matter. But in time, when the candle goes above the five day and it gets green and green and the next day green and other green, eventually that candle will intercept with the upper dot of the weekly. Sure, and from sure. there on, you just load the truck and you go on, you go long and you go long and long. You see, uh, but, but on a daily chart, uh, if it goes like so, uh, I don't want to reiterate what I said. Uh, in, sure, in sure, the, sure. Not maybe tomorrow or Monday, this right, going right. to be uh, going to change the trend. Okay, so let me give you the numbers that you're looking for. So the numbers that you're looking for on my system, I switched over to the white background charts. I can share with you that you also have resistance at 58.54, and 58.54 is the top of its no, daily profile. 87. No, no. For, uh, yes, on my chart, though, what I oh, want to oh, share I'm with sorry, you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. yeah, yeah. So the top of its daily profile is at 58.54. So that is a battleground. In fact, the battleground area, because this is a bearish structure daily profile, is between fifty is between fifty seven seventy fifty seven fifty nine and fifty eight fifty four. 
that is where the uh -huh. sellers reside. What this would say is if price can close about 58 to 54 for two consecutive sessions, that will then give us the bullish signal or at least a change in trend out there for the daily uh -huh. time frame. My charts right. like yours on the weekly basis say this might want lower price. The reason that I say that is that this formed a TD nine count top on the weekly time frame, and last week price pulled back and it closed just below the uh, its TD its breakout level. Its breakout level is fifty seven seventy eight. That should have held the support. The question is: This a one week wonder or not? Well, we're still trading below fifty seven seventy eight. This is telling me that if we get a close yeah. below fifty five. We see here 50 5568 we could be looking at 40 we could be looking at 4233 do me a favor girl just hold on through this break i want to come back make sure i've answered all your questions that's garo yes, yes, in yes, newport yes. beach california steve Rhodes here we'll be right back folks If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Garo in Newport Beach, California. We're taking a look at the uh, ticker symbol SQ Square. I'm trying to get a different screen up on my uh, system, and wow, it won't let me do that. So how am I going to do this? Um, Garo, let me tell you what it's doing. Let me describe to you what it's doing out here, what Square is doing. It's testing, and now you don't use volume, so that's why I want to go ahead and add what it's doing from that perspective for you. And there's a swing point, that, swing point low that formed in May 15th.
And that May 15th swing point had volume of 9.4 million shares. We are trading with inside that swing point. As it's been moving sideways, we pretty much have been trading inside that swing point. To give you an idea, when that level was tested, that was on August 18th, and that was tested with 9.8 million shares. When you test a swing point with more volume, you typically want to test it again. That's what's going on over the last couple of days out here. Today's volume so far is 3.2 million shares, so we could be at another 9 million share a day out here. But here's what I would suggest, and that is if price closes below 55, I want to give you a different number out here. If price closes below 55.05, and it does with more than 9.4 million shares out there, even though you don't use volume, it will generate a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And this would be looking at the 4655. So one thing you and I can agree on is that not until price closes above the 58 and change number, mine is 58.54, yours is 58.80 ish out there. Let's just call it 59 right now. Not until price closes above that will this have its uh, bullish legs out there. So I'd be watching that bottom and I'd be watching 55.05. What questions are unanswered that I can try to provide you the information for in the next 30 minutes? 30 seconds, I should say. No. Yeah, no, no questions, sir. No questions. I okay. don't see and I don't have 4665 at all in none of my charts. So I wrote that number down in case if, if that doesn't do all the promises that it did is today or tomorrow and it yes. goes below that 55 and change, then yes. it goes to 56, 4665. Then all my, my all my uh, uh, the system and all my um, uh, knowledge will go to zero, zero to zero. Oh. So I have well, we to can't, start from. We Start from scratch now. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to let that happen. Everybody go out there and buy Square. Just kidding. Hey, Carol. Oh, <laughs> always you, great, to, always great to speak to you. you. We'll so look much. forward to speaking Thank to you again. You. you bet. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming we have lined up. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday and be safe out there.